Elizabeth I died on March 24, 1603, at the age of 69 after a reign of 45 years. Some say that she may have died of blood poisoning, brought on by her use of lead-based makeup, known as Venetian Cirrus. Today on History Bazaar, we're talking about Elizabeth I and the makeup that may have led to her death. In the Queen's era, Snow White's mom wished for more than a tiny ghost baby. She wanted her to have lips as red as blood on winter roses. Made from cinnabar, a toxic material containing mercury, the Queen's lip stain gave her the signature red mouth that leaps out at you in all those creepy paintings. So here we have two horrific poisons working in tandem through skin absorption over long periods. On the surface, the lead face slowly corroded the queen's skin. In response, Elizabeth wore thicker and thicker layers of makeup, reportedly layering makeup an inch thick toward the end of her life. Symptoms of mercury poisoning include memory loss, irritability, and depression, conditions Elizabeth reportedly experienced toward the end of her life. Now it's getting warmer, isn't it? During the Virgin Queen's era, the highest standard for female beauty was smooth, blinding white skin. To achieve this look, Elizabeth wore Venetian Ceruse, a cosmetic made from white lead and vinegar. She patted her face and neck with the substance, transforming her pockmarked skin into an eerie porcelain canvas that probably smelled like sour wine. That's certainly one way to maintain your virginity. Thanks to 400 years of science, we now know that applying lead to the face daily causes very serious and irreversible problems like hair loss and skin deterioration and of course death by lead poisoning which in the 16th century was pretty damn final. It may well have been for Queen Elizabeth but the lead wasn't the only poison in her pigments. There were other hidden suspects too. As a teen, Queen Elizabeth didn't quite wear so much lead face, not simply because she was a child, but because she hadn't caught smallpox yet. On October 10, 1562, she was struck with a high fever and displayed all the hallmarks of pox. Courtiers worried and worried that Elizabeth would die within a week, but the young royal survived. Unfortunately, the disease left her with permanent scars in her terrible 20s when life is either a bed of roses or a garbage fire. And scars don't stack the odds against the latter. Smallpox scars were a common problem at that time, hence the willingness of women to wear vinegary lead face. Elizabeth's close friend, Mary Sidney, got stuck with them too. As Henry Sidney, Mary's husband wrote, the scars to her resolute discomfort ever since have done and do remain on her face. Trying to survive in an atmosphere of constant bitchiness, Elizabeth did everything possible to cover up such blemishes and keep that virginity on lockdown. Anything to avoid a husband who updates people on his wife's pockmark. In the Elizabethan era, nobles didn't clean off their makeup nightly. Heck, most modern women have been guilty of that at least a couple of times. After her maids carefully applied lead and mercury makeup to the royal face, Elizabeth herself wore it for at least a week. Forget about poor blockage, the lead soaked into her skin, causing it to turn gray and wrinkled. When Elizabeth finally had her makeup removed, historians suggest she might have used a gross concoction containing eggshells, alum, and you guessed it, more mercury. Some claim that the mercury makeup remover left their skin soft, but that was only because it was skinning them alive, one layer at a time. In a ballsy act of pre-Instagram filtering, Elizabeth I 
flat out forbade unflattering portraits of herself. Painters were allowed to get creative. They had to make her look young and supple and even white, even as she entered her autumn years, which in this case is a little too good at describing what happens to human skin after decades of lead makeup. Here's a trick the artist had to make the portrait unrecognizable as Queen Elizabeth without showing any of the scars, sagging, and perhaps even molten skin beneath that inch-thick mask of white. Enter the famous Darnley portrait painted in 1575. It became a godsend of a model for later portrayals, as grateful artists reused its depiction of Elizabeth's face in paintings for decades. Elizabeth's battle against the ravages of time was fierce and lasted all her life. One of her wiser tricks was to wear a wig. Lord knows what lunacy would have been used to dye grays away back then. For a long time, it was basically like Shatner's toupee. It existed, but was never officially confirmed until 1599 when the Earl of Essex blew the secret out of the water and immortalized it, expressing his shock upon beholding his elderly queen's mostly bald pate, with only a thin ring of hair hanging about the ears. We can't unseen that, can we? In her last days, Elizabeth refused to let doctors examine her. According to a member of the court, the queen had fallen into a deep melancholy. Still, Elizabeth refused to rest. She believed that if she lie down, she would never get up. So Elizabeth stood 15 hours straight with her lady spreading pillows around the queen for when she inevitably collapsed. On March 24, 1603, Elizabeth passed away. Possible causes of her death include cancer or pneumonia, but Elizabeth's use of lead and mercury-based makeup for decades in increasingly liberal doses certainly at least contributed to her declining health. While Elizabeth certainly suffered the effects of lead and mercury poisoning, she may have died from blood poisoning. Just a week before she passed, in 1603, Elizabeth's doctors recommended a risky procedure. For 45 years since the day she was crowned, Elizabeth wore a coronation ring. The ring began cutting into Elizabeth's well-poisoned skin and presumably kept on cutting. Doctors warned her that the ring had to be surgically removed, and a week later, she died and then exploded, depending on who you ask. After a lifetime of lead and mercury poisoning, Elizabeth's body was toxic. Elizabeth Southwell, one of the queen's ladies-in-waiting, claimed that Elizabeth's body burst in her coffin at her wake due to the abundance of noxious vapors. Although Southwell's account has often been dismissed as Jesuit propaganda of all things, exploding coffins aren't unheard of, even today. The phenomenon is called exploding casket syndrome, and it's what happens when a corpse is sealed a bit too well. The coffin acts as a pressure cooker for all the gases and fluids produced by a decomposing body until, well, there's a reason this got chalked up to bad religion. Evidence of people using lead for makeup dates back to at least the 5th century BC. During the time of the Roman Empire, women powdered their faces with lead. By the 16th century, the concoction was known as Venetian Cirrus, or the spirits of the Saturn Queen Elizabeth's favorite cosmetic. Unfortunately for her and every other Cirrus fan in history, it wasn't classified as a poison until 1634, less than 40 years after her death, when it had at least one hand in, if not both. People knew it caused their hair loss and skin damage, but it took a while for us to figure out that we were killing ourselves in the name of beauty. In many ways, we still are. Like it or not, pain and death for beauty is a very old and well-entrenched tradition, and it's not done with us anytime soon. Especially when we see the male influencers promoting the use of makeup for, well, males. Thanks for watching History Bazaar. 
Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one.